an absolute mad way to start the portal kickoff for the Gophers. Ethan Kalik Manis is entering the portal. What does that mean for the Gophers and the quarterback position moving forward? We're going to dive into three realistic options, three not so realistic options, and then we're going to talk about Drake Lindsay. Hey, you no are locked on happens, Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And we got a whole lot of quarterback talk this week because the quarterback position at Minnesota just got a heck of a lot crazier. Ethan Kaliak Manis enters the transfer portal, not just him, but also Drew Vioto, the third string quarterback, true freshman from last year's class. You've also got other players outside of the quarterback position that have already hit their net or made their intentions known that they can't actually enter their name until early December, but made their intentions known that they're going to be going to the portal. Include Max Grand, a running back, Marquise Williams, a running back, J.J. Gaudet, an offensive lineman, Zach Jorgensen, and Colton Gregerson. All of those players have made it known that they are going to be entering the portal. But Ethan Kalik Manis and Drew Vioto, two quarterbacks in a quarterback room of four, both hitting the transfer portal in the Gophers QB room is in chaos. Now, yesterday's show, we talked about Max Brosmer being a potential fit and what his quarterback coach had mentioned his strengths are. And it was exciting. It was a time where you could be like, wow, this could be a really pot- high potential quarterback room having Max Brosmer, Ethan Kalik Manis duking it out while also having young guys in the background, Drew Vioto, Drake Lindsay, uh, pushing themselves, getting themselves ready to be the next man up. And now all of a sudden, that entire that premise, that idea is all flawed. It's all potentially gone because multiple quarterbacks hit the portal. So, you know what? It caught many off guard, including some of his teammates, Ethan Kalik Manis. Uh, so what's most funny to me when looking at that Ethan Kalik Manis transfer is those – how many people have like torn him apart, hated on him, ripped him on social media and all of that, but then are the same type of people that are like, how could he do this? How could he, ab- how could he give up on his team? How could he not compete? Look, bro, you've been destroying this kid all season. And now you're like, how could he leave? Those two things, the hypocrisy, it will never be lost on me. But moving on, the expectations were high for Ethan Kalik Manis and probably a bit unrealistic. But with after a major game in 2022 against Wisconsin, where he put up over 300 yards, fans were excited. Fans were like, oh, this is the next guy. He had a hot start there. He had a hot start in the bowl before getting injured, along with a comeback win versus Nebraska last season when Tanner left at halftime. And many were touting the red shirt sophomore as a program savior for 2023. But I believe that that, that, Maybe he was just setting the bar a bit too high because he still had to go through growing pains. And I believe the biggest flaw in this saga wasn't all on Cali McManus. It was the Gophers wanting the quarterback to fit their system over building an offense to the strengths of their quarterback. And I don't know that, <clears throat> I don't know if you know this or not, but not. One of the members of this Gopher staff is Mike Shanahan. They're not a player or Kyle Shanahan. They're not a, a coach that has the the sauce, the secret recipe, someone who has made it happen time and time again with any quarterback that comes through their system. That isn't what the Gophers are. They don't have that QB whisperer, the QB guru type to pull that off. So I think that was a flaw in this whole relationship, but I do believe Ethan showed some growth from the Iowa game through the Illinois game. And throughout the year, he shows many flashes as a QB one for the Gophers, but he also had some huge glimpses of struggles. 
And paired with the unrealistic nature of the expectations, many fans ragged on him rather than giving him time to grow through it. And it all really came out at that UNC game. And from that moment on, many had written the young gopher quarterback off. So if a vast majority of the fan base was already ripping him, plus the system wasn't necessarily a fit to his strengths, and you're potentially starting to second guess yourself or your confidence waivers, or you are thinking more in the game rather than playing free, mistakes happen, pressure adds up, and the noise gets louder. I think of Justin Fields in the NFL. Now, Justin Fields was an absolute maniac in college. Dude went crazy, was a Heisman finalist, got to a natty championship, even though they ended up losing that game. He was he was a dog. Like Justin Fields got it done in college. He gets to the NFL and he's struggling, especially as a passer, and people are throwing him out the window and all oh, he's garbage and all this stuff. And then he tries to come in this third year season and he tries to fit into the system again after he was having success with the rushing aspects and playing free last season. The coach tries to put him back in a box and all of a sudden he's struggling and he's not looking good and people are calling him a bust and ripping him apart. And then the coach starts to, you know what, let's cater to what his strengths are. Let's move to the type of style that he has had success with. Let's make easier passes. Let's use his rushing ability. Let's make quicker reads, all that stuff. And now these last three games, Justin Fields has been balling. He's The last three games he has played, he has been absolutely ripping people apart. And he just ripped Minnesota apart a little bit. Now, there were some screens in there and all that. But regardless, you hear what I'm saying is that building – around your quarterback skill set can go a long way and that wasn't happening here and honestly when all that's stacking up on top of itself I don't blame him for entering the portal but all we can do at this point is move forward so I think overall best of luck to Ethan Kaliak Manis I wish nothing but the best for him in his career moving forward and you should too as a Gopher fan because if you look at the history of the quarterbacks that have been having success right now a lot of them have transferred Bo Nix Auburn fans tore him apart transfers look at him in the right system now at Arizona State the fans ripped apart Jaden Daniels he transfers gets into the right system look at him now some IU fans, when they had Michael Penix, tore him down. Transfers, goes to Washington. Now look at him. Now I say some IU fans because there were a handful of fans that were just concerned about the injury, not so much about the play that he had on the field. But what I'm saying is, I'm not saying Ethan is the next Davey O'Brien finalist like those three quarterbacks, but what I'm saying is a few years from now, he could be finding success in a system that fits him better. So there's no need to tear the kid down. We can just say thank you and move our focus to who will be our next quarterback, which is what I want to dive into <clears throat> coming up next. A few QB names that the, could possibly be a nice fit for the Minnesota Gophers, and also a couple QB names that you might as well scratch off your list because they are not coming to Minnesota. There's no chance. There's no ifs, no ands, no buts. So I'm going to take those three off your list and give you three to focus on for next season coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Prize Picks because if you like daily fantasy sports, it is the place to be. I have so much fun playing Prize Picks, and they've got you covered. If you're worried about an injury or you're worried about Chris Paul getting ejected by Scott Foster, like I experienced recently, they have a reboot policy that kicks that player's scores out of your up and or your higher or lower. Uh, players that you submit so you don't have to worry about losing your fantasy matchup because of a thing that was out of your control so that reboot policy is amazing and on top of that you can win up to 25 times your money all you have to do is press over or under on simple stat projections and if you get multiples correct you can win up to 25 times your money so you can test your skills on prize picks while this nfl season wraps up and also with the nba season nhl season in full swing there are so many sporting options for you to choose from and it all happens you can turn ten dollars into 250 dollars in just a few taps and you can also play alongside some of prize picks favorite players like meek mill or andrew schultz and you can find the community plays under the promo tabs in the app to view entries from the biggest names in the prize picks community so go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college again that's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and if you use promo code locked on college your first time deposit match will be matched 
up to $100. So you put $100 in, you get $100. That's $200 straight to your account right away from Jump. So head on over to prizeweeks.com slash lockdown college today. All right, Gophers fans, we are talking about three options that Minnesota could look at in this transfer portal, maybe have a realistic shot at, and three that you need to take off your list ASAP because it isn't happening. I'm trying to save you from the hope and the pain right now. Now, the first one that we have to talk about that is a possibility is Max Brosmer from New Hampshire. He was the leader in the FCS in passing yards last year, second in touchdowns last season, and he is definitely Gophers' priority numero uno. The fact that he has an offer right away, the second that they're able to make that contact with him, they do. I am telling you now, opportunity is potentially real and it sounds like from his quarterbacks coach it's not out of the cards there definitely could be some hope there and honestly with so many power five quarterbacks that have now put their names into the portal guys from indiana michigan state uh, mississippi state minnesota and so many others that have now entered the portal it seems like a ton of players are entering the portal and with that porter market so saturated minnesota could be a major offer for max brosmer on top of if he feels like the system fit is the right thing and he could get the opportunity to start right away now that definitely could peak interest for the quarterback. Now, he's currently ranked as one of the best transfer quarterbacks across multiple platforms, so hopefully Minnesota can act early and roll out the red carpet at that point, hopefully get him on campus ASAP, especially with Ethan hitting the portal himself. So Max Brosmer, priority numero uno, the Gophers are going to try to put on the full blitz and make sure he comes to Dinkytown. Another option that has been an FCS passer, Matt Sluka of Holy Cross. Now, this guy also has put up a vast majority of numbers, a vast amount of numbers at the FCS level. He has had the opportunity to throw the ball around a ton. He is just under 6,000 yards over his last two seasons as a starter. And so the Gophers are going to have to turn to maybe potentially the FCS as opposed to other high major players that are leaving for different opportunities just because it's a hard selling point with their current NIL status and not having enough to bring in maybe a huge name player on top of uh, the the struggles from last year, the system that hasn't had a ton of passing opportunities uh, over the last three, four seasons even. You have to prove to quarterbacks in that transfer portal that you're going to be <clears throat> a real option, an option that can pass the ball around and that can get them looks, get a player looks before big time quarterbacks are going to consider coming over this way. It's not like you have been known to pass the ball a ton. So it's hard to get that out of other FBS quarterbacks minds. Now taking a bigger jump up from the FCS is a different story because you are not only taking that jump up to the FBS level, but if you can get to a power five school level as well, you're you're looking to prove people wrong. You're looking to take that opportunity. So both Matt Sluka and Max Bro- Brosmer could be the right fit there and the right next step, a double step for both of those players to prove It wasn't just the FCS. I can ball out at the Power 5 level too, and the school is willing to take a shot at me, so let's make it happen. So those two are good options. And the third option that I think could be realistic for Minnesota is Hank Bachmeyer. Louisiana Tech quarterback last year. He was at Boise State prior to that. So if Minnesota is looking for someone with experience, this will be Bachmeyer's third school, and he has started for both Boise State and Louisiana Tech. Now, he was 20-9 and at Boise State, so he has done some winning in his time in college. And last season with Louisiana Tech, he was 67% completion, 2,058 yards, 10 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions, and he didn't even start all of the games. So his best year at Boise, he was 62% with three th- over 3,000 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. So he can produce, but the, he's had a vast experience, amount of experience. And with Minnesota, they'll likely need to find someone with a great amount of experience for this room that could possibly have only a true fr- or a redshirt freshman walk-on in Shikajansky, and then also having a true freshman 2024 in Drake Lindsey as your current quarterbacks for next season. Plus, it could maybe encourage Hank Bachmeyer's little brother, four-star quarterback of the 2025 class, who is a top 
10 rated quarterback across consensus platforms, top 15, uh, depending on the platform you're looking at. So maybe Hank Bachmeyer comes here, he balls out, he has a good experience, he fits into the culture, he buys in, and he's talking back home like, look, low bro, I know that it doesn't seem like Minnesota's a spot, but they're going to treat you right, they're going to take care of you, they're going to give you opportunities, all this stuff. Maybe you get a two-for-one there. So it's it's maybe slim, maybe that doesn't happen, but it's a possibility that the Gophers could look at moving forward. Now, I do want to talk about three quarterbacks that is absolutely not happening for the Minnesota Gophers. The first one being Will Howard, Kansas State, already noise surrounding him as one of the top quarterback options in this year's transfer portal. Auburn, Missouri, Louisville, Washington are some names rumored to be considering going after Will Howard. Now, three of those programs have been a top 10 school in this 2023 season and have high volume passing. So go ahead, scratch him off the list, though his experience and his style could be a wonderful fit here at Minnesota. Plus, Minnesota had recruited him in high school, but I just don't think it's in the cards with the amount of noise and attention that he is getting as a prospect. The second one is Nate Johnson. Now, he's a super young quarterback. He's still got three years of eligibility left. He's coming from Utah. He's a dual threat quarterback, but Minnesota wouldn't be a system fit for Nate Johnson because Utah already didn't utilize him in that manner, and I don't think Minnesota would either. He is not a quarterback to get through multiple reads and try to dictate your offensive flow. He is a quarterback that you allow to play in his flow and use his athleticism while building your system and your calls around his skill set, similar to Ethan. And he can also be up and down with his accuracy, similar to Ethan. So this fan base couldn't handle it. On top of that, the staff and the system doesn't feel like the right fit for him. I do not see Nate Johnson being an option for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And then finally, the one you got to cross off your list. Will Rogers, Mississippi State. With over 12,000 passing yards and nearly 70% completion with all of that yardage, we won't have the funds. He won't play in the cold weather. He won't fit the culture. We won't have the funds. We don't pass the ball enough. He won't fit this offense PJ wants, and we don't have the funds. This one is definitely not happening in any way, shape, or form. Minnesota fans crossing their fingers. You can stop. Will Rogers is not coming to Minnesota, so cross that one off the list. Those three are unrealistic, but one thing that is realistic and will be happening regardless of anybody in the transfer portal is Drake Lindsey is committed to the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and it seems like he is all in on coming here. So let's get a reminder of what Drake's Drake Lindsey's strengths are, what we could expect from that young gopher as a true freshman and what could be the hiccups that take a little bit of time for him as it does for most true freshmen coming into the division one level we're going to talk about drake Lindsay coming up next First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs because LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. And hiring can be easy when you have have many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to get those qualified candidates. So they're taking that stress off of your plate. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So to go to LinkedIn, dot com slash locked on college to post about your job for free again that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post about your job for free terms and conditions apply all right Govers fans let's talk about this true freshman commit 
for the quarterback position for Minnesota. Now, many fans are excited about the 2024 commit in Drake Lindsay out of Arkansas. He's a good kid, good head on his shoulders, and it seems like he's made a lot of improvements from junior year to senior year and really elevated himself in different areas that he was looking to grow in. Now, we had Drake Lindsay on the show. You can go back and find that episode. I will actually link it at the end of this video so you can take a look at that interview with Drake Lindsay himself, but you can see why fans are excited. He had 3,561 yards on the season in his senior year on 69.5% completion with 51 touchdowns and two interceptions. 51 touchdowns and two interceptions. That's definitely numbers that pop off the page, and he has led his team to an opportunity at a state championship this upcoming weekend. Now, this isn't a one-year wonder thing. It wasn't just like senior year was the big thing, and, you know, it just – all of a sudden clicked. As a junior, he also had success, 3,620 yards with 67% completion, 37 touchdowns, three interceptions. Biggest thing you see in both of those seasons is he takes care of the ball. He is shown to be accurate and a winner. And I mean, 88 touchdowns to five interceptions across two years is impressive no matter how you slice it. He takes care of the ball. He scores the football. And then you add in the fact that he is a very big quarterback with huge prototypical size for a quarterback, six foot five, 220 pounds in high school. He put on 25 pounds from junior year to senior year, which you mentioned in our talks. And he also can take care of the ball, which is huge for Coach Fleck, being as the ball is the program. Now, it wasn't the program this past season, but they're going to be looking to get that right this upcoming season. So that could be huge and an asset to Drake Lindsay as he comes in as a true freshman. Now, I looked at his film, and there are a lot of uh, uh, passes that pop off the page, but there was one pass where I was just like, his strength plus the touch he put on his throw on a corner route was very nice to see on his tape, especially knowing we have that route tree or that route in our route tree and our concepts in our system with Daniel Jackson that happened very often this past season. It's definitely something you want to see from a young passer, but it's not an easy throw to make at the high school level, especially having the strength to do it and the touch to put it in the right place. Now, I talked with Drake earlier this fall, and he talked about he, how he has really improved his quickness not only in speed and not only in his twitchiness, but also in his drops and how important timing and timing routes are at his high school. So that is going to play in his favor for this Minnesota offense that should go hand in hand with what they are looking for in their quarterback prospects. Now, he mentioned to me during his recruiting, he felt like he didn't get all the looks that he should have. He feels that chip on his shoulder. He feels that underdog mentality, but Minnesota was there along the way and his grandpa having ties to Minnesota, it felt like it was the right place for him. So you got that and he never he never got those offers that he wanted, but he knew he wanted to go to the Power Five and that this gave him the best opportunity to not only go to the Power Five, but also to play early. Well, that mission might have gotten even more possible with the departures from the go first quarterback room to the transfer portal. But the biggest question for me then is how quickly can he get up to speed at that big 10 level? Because coming from high school to D1 power five FBS play, it's not easy. It's not easy for anyone of any position, especially at the quarterback position. But some guys do have it. Some guys have it where it just comes in quickly and others, it might take a year or two. And that is perfectly okay if that is the realistic expectation within those players as well. That's the biggest thing. And hopefully the coaching staff and Drake Lindsay have talked about those type of things. If the expectation is, you know what, we're probably going to need one year, one year of development before it's like, okay, it's full blown. You can compete for the starting job. Or if they're like, look, with how things are now, we might need you to come in right away. Who knows what those discussions are, but I can tell you that hopefully they are being had because overall, I think that it's a big ask to ask anybody to come in and play as a true freshman. And I don't know if that is going to happen or if that is a realistic expectation, but with his measurables, his play strengths and his production, it could be possible. Minnesota found a prospect that many others simply overlooked and it's not just me saying things like that. Former Arkansas coach Houston Nutt seems to think so as well. He thinks that the Arkansas Razorbacks are missing out on a homegrown talent that could have been great for them. One thing he mentioned to reporters down in his area is that the ball comes out of Drake's hands so quick. Quick release and he is very accurate. 
He talked about watching him in a game and how he the wind was blowing like 20 miles per hour. And there was one ball he threw against the wind that went 65 to 68 yards, and it dropped in a bucket on a deep ball that he can make every throw, and that should have Gopher fans excited. Whether it's in the upcoming season or a couple seasons from now, Drake Lindsay is definitely a name to keep on the radar, and he could be a diamond in the rough, a overlooked process who is looking – or an overlooked – uh, prospect is the word I meant to say there that is being overlooked but has that chip on his shoulder to prove everyone wrong and those are the people you love to pull for now that's going to do it for us here at Lockdown Golden Gophers I appreciate you listening be sure to hit subscribe the QB talk is definitely not done but we're going to mix in some basketball talk this week as well I will see you then bro the boats guy you might go Gophers and as always don't forget to subscribe <laughs>